Good morning, Minecraft, and welcome to the world of Arch Spore with your host, it's me, One Wolf. Hey guys, this is One Wolf, and today I'm hanging out in my library, um, preparing for my next episode. And man, am I tired. I just got back from a six hour survival quest to help a friend find a pine tree. Um, yes, I was searching for a pine tree for the Mind Fiend and had a lot of fun running around in his seed. But uh, today I'm going to be talking about how I made all these books. Um, each floor that has books on it took about six or seven stacks of bookshelves. And uh, I'm going to show you guys where I got all my sugar cane and the paper for that. But uh, first, I wanted to mention a couple of things. Um, first, I recently uploaded my map to minecraftworldmap.com. So you guys will be able to take a look at it and uh, see all the areas that I've explored. Um, I don't have it available for download because there are certain plans that I would like to finish first. Um, one is my mansion. There's a lot of things I want to work on with my mansion before I make uh, a map uh, available for download. And the other is a rather large project that I'm about to begin. Um, not don't want to say too much about it yet, but I will let you guys know that it involves me going into the nether and that's the other reason why I haven't gone in there and 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 collecting a lot of glowstone is because I'm I'm holding out and waiting for this project to begin um, so once I do you guys will get to see me uh, running around in the nether uh, getting very lost in the dark and being blown up by uh, race so look forward to that in the next few weeks um, so it should be it should be fairly soon. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna drag it out anymore. I would really like to get on with it. So um, the rest of this episode is going to be me discussing my sugarcane farm. So uh, let's get to it, and I'll meet you guys over there. Okay, there's my my mansion. And I don't know if we can make out the windmill over there through the trees. Probably not, but here is my sugarcane farm. And there's my lighthouse. This is my high volume sugarcane farm. And there's a lot of rows. And I think this particular setup for me is much easier to use. Um, and I don't, I, I don't think an automated one would work very well for my purposes because I spend so much time moving around or exploring or, you know, I spend a great deal of time underground digging and I forget, I would completely forget to come up here and check and collect the sugar cane, like at the end of the day or something, um, so this is what I do. I simply just run through and I smack the sugar cane. I don't use any other tool at all. Oop. Oop. Uh, I need to plant that back. And then I run back. And if you guys were noticing, I actually get an, one run through here gives me an entire stack of sugar cane. So I'm trying to build it up to a point where I can fill my inventory just by running through all of this um, for a high volume sugar cane farm. Okay, here I am uh, clearing the last row that I've got grown. And uh, once I'm done here and I've got enough enough sugar cane, I'll uh, show you what I'm doing to build this. Um, I'm building it over 
fairly deep section of water. And right now it's at the point where you can't swim under it without uh, suffocating. <laughs> um, you'll actually survive, but you'll have a few hearts left. And as you can see, the first row that I cut is almost finished growing. So I figure if I add a few more rows, the first section will be completely done, and I'll just be able to do a continuous cycle. So to start, I need some dirt. In fact, I need a lot of dirt. Um, uh, my inventory does not reflect the quantity of goods that I actually pulled out of here. Um, I've already made a trip back to the, my storage box. So what I'm doing is just, just like building a bridge in the air. Um, I'm holding down shift, I'm holding down S, and I'm holding down my right mouse button. And it just lays out the dirt in line. I think there's like 36 or 37 blocks of dirt that get laid out. And yes, I did see that uh, piece of sugar cane that floated by over there. Um, I collect such a high quantity of sugar cane from this from this farm. One or two pieces don't even bother me. Um, but I'm going to add a feature here today that I saw on somebody else's farm. I don't remember who it was, but um, it will prevent any more sugarcane from falling into the trenches in between. So I'm going to start using that feature instead of what I've been doing in the past. Um, I used to lay another row under here so you could walk on it without falling in the, in the deep water. but I think I have found a better way to do things. So for now, I'm going to start planning, and I will get back to you guys in a minute. All right, I just added uh, four new rows to my sugarcane farm, uh, one here and two on the other side. And... The special feature that I'm going to add next that I saw in somebody else's uh, video is going to be an elevated row of dirt between each row of sugarcane. Um, the water still needs to be there, but if I place a row of dirt over the top of the water, sugarcane should, should still should still remain, and, and it looks like it's working just fine. Oops, except for when you do that. So, <laughs> that was a boo-boo. Um, so hopefully I can continue and not have that mistake be a little more careful. Instead of holding down the right mouse button and just auto-clicking on everything, I think I'm going to click as I go. I think that might be safer. So, I'm going to finish this row and then I'm going to end this clip and try and finish off the rest Finish off filling out the dirt on the rest, and I will be right back. All right, well, there it is. Um, that is my high volume sugarcane farm, and I've got uh, three rows left and no inventory slots. 
So it looks like uh, it's doing pretty good. I just uh, recently added, I guess, uh, bumper rows to uh, prevent the sugar cane from falling in the water. And I think it works pretty well. Um, there is manual labor involved in collecting the sugar cane, but if you show up with uh, an empty inventory, no tools, because you don't need them, you should be able to fill up fill up your inventory in just one one clearing. It uh, it only takes a few minutes. I do eventually want to maybe create a uh, an automated or a fully automated sugarcane farm. Um, just recently saw a new um, light detector switch from Etho today, and or no, it was yesterday. I saw it yesterday. Just apologize. So, if I use a, a day and night switch, or even um, it'll even detect. Uh, growing sugar cane so I don't have to do it once a day I can I can set it up on a single piece of sugar cane and once that sugar cane is fully grown then it will harvest the rest of them um, I might build something like that just for fun but as far as a practical large-scale use I don't I don't know how well it would work. So, um, probably build it over by my library. I've got a, uh, a bridge leading over to a mountain cliff with nothing on it. I haven't built anything out over there. And I keep breaking the, the lower one. So I think I think I might do that in the future just for fun um, eventually. Um, if you guys have any ideas, leave me some comments. I love to read all your comments. Um, if you like my videos, give me a thumbs up or subscribe. So to end this particular uh, episode, I am going to present another short clip of the current building project that I'm working on. So have a good night and enjoy. Okay, um, I just recently had a subscriber request from Mighty Maxian who asked me what the dye looks like in my particular texture pack. Well, it's not my texture pack, it's just the one I like to use the most. Um, well, that's what, uh, that's what the dye looks like. It looks like a little vial bottle, kind of like potions in some other games that I've, I like to play. Uh, Diablo, for instance, looks like the potion bottle. Um, so thanks for posting the uh, question, and uh, so thank you, the Mighty Maxian, for posting the question. I hope that helps you out.